In the early 1990s, the troll doll craze had struck. This was just one instance where these ugly dolls had become popular, as they tend to spike in popularity every 10 years or so, and have been doing so as early as the 1960s. But the early 1990s were a unique spike in popularity for troll dolls, because it seemed as though everyone was ready to jump on the bandwagon and market these to kids of all ages and genders so that they could grab a piece of that pie. In 1993, the Ace Novelty Company, one of the companies behind the basic troll dolls at the time, decided they were going to market a brand new line of trolls that would specifically target the boys demographic. At the time, all those boys were completely hooked on a little line from Playmates known as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Thus, Ace Novelty gave birth to the Stone Protectors. In a nutshell, Ace Novelty practically took one of their troll dolls and mated it with a Ninja Turtle. The result of that incredibly bizarre union were a set of action figures that had the same bright colors and basic designs as something you would see from Playmates TMNT line with an ugly troll head slapped on top. The story of the Stone Protectors goes something like this. The evil Zock and Zinc desired to obtain powerful crystals for themselves, so they could use them to do evil stuff. <laughs> but before they could grab these crystals for themselves, they exploded and flew down to the planet Earth. Here a terrible rock band who called themselves the Rock Detectors, great name by the way, were just kicked out of a New York club for sucking at playing instruments and stuff. <laughs> at this moment, the crystals came crashing down on Earth and bonded with the members of this band. The crystals granted each member a unique power and gave them their troll appearances. I'm not sure I'd want to hang on to a crystal if it made me look like that. So in a nutshell, the band members became the Stone Protectors guarding these crystals from the evil Zock and his henchman Zinc. I know, it's pretty basic and quite typical. But come on, what else were you expecting from troll dolls made for boys? Those so-called powers that were granted to each member gave them special abilities. Interesting choices, I must say as they aren't really powers as much as they are different professions or hobbies. We've got Angus the Soldier, Chester the Pro Wrestler, Clifford the Rock Climber, Cornelius the Samurai, and Maxwell the Accelerator whatever an accelerator is. And then rounding out that first wave of figures, we were also treated to the two villains, Zack and Zink. As mentioned earlier, the basic design of these figures is very similar to what we were seeing with TMNT at the time. This was not uncommon for figures of this era, as many were hoping to capture the same magic the Turtles did. They featured the same stocky 5-inch bodies with similar articulation and even brightly colored outfits and weapons. Of course, since each of the characters were part of a rock band, a lot of their weapons try and incorporate various musical instruments. <laughs> Definitely a bit wacky. Each figure also features the trademark troll doll type hair on their heads although each character has their own distinct hairstyle. Finally, each figure also features a crystal attached to their chest. By moving the figure's right arm, a flint module inside would ignite a bright flash in the chest that would show through the figure's crystal. The line also featured a variety of wacky vehicles. 
The ideas were there, but the overall toys were not really the best. For example, we'll take a look at this contraption. Again, it's very reminiscent of something we would get from TMNT. This set is a mishmash of random parts and trash all heaped together to create a crazy type of catapult. It's actually mildly humorous, as the barbecue grill opens up and launches a small rubber stake at its victims. Like I said, the idea is definitely there, as this is quite a goofy yet fun idea for a vehicle. The problem is that the overall feel and look of this item is a bit cheap. There just doesn't feel like there's much to it, and it's made of a really light and cheap feeling plastic. Now a second series of action figures did see release, which featured new versions of the main heroes in various sports attire. However, by the time this wave was out, interest in the line had all but vanished, and the figures soon began hitting KB Toy Store clearance bins. I'm not real sure why these didn't catch on. In all honesty, Ace Novelty had a really great idea in trying to combine two incredibly popular toys in an attempt to create a new super popular line. But maybe boys just couldn't get past the idea that they were ultimately playing with a troll doll. Personally, I always wanted to get some stone protectors, as I knew they would fit right in with my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toys. And they really do. Even displaying them on the shelf, they actually seem to almost fit right alongside with the crazy characters from that line. Heck, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles even released their own versions of troll dolls eventually. So, they may be ugly. They really may be nothing more than troll dolls for dudes. But overall, I like the Stone Protectors line. And I'm glad that Ace Novelty had this crazy idea.